If you're measuring weak audio signals, or generally low frequency with an oscilloscope, common mode noise is typically a hundred times stronger than the amplifier noise. By using a low noise differential probe, you can get rid of common mode noise entirely and also reduce the amplifier noise. This means that at full audio bandwidth, you'll be able to display waveforms with around one microvolt of resolution, which is the noise floor. High voltage differential probes are also readily available, but they're quite noisy and are designed specifically to measure high voltage signals with a margin of safety. On the other hand, low noise differential probes are very expensive, typically $5,000 for the ones configured for low frequency work. Alpha Lab is now making a very low noise differential amplifier and probe that's less than a tenth of that price. It features two input amplifiers that are matched to within one one thousandth of a percent. Also there's good isolation between the input grounds and the output ground and the amplifiers have very low intrinsic noise of about four nanovolts per root hertz. It includes a tunable low pass filter from one hertz to one megahertz. Here's an example of a typical problem you'll face. This is a one volt peak to peak one kilohertz square wave and this breadboard is a simple 1000 to 1 voltage divider, so the signal going to the scope is 1 millivolt peak to peak. Vertical gain is 2 millivolts per division, which is the maximum gain for this scope. The noise you see here is a few hundred microvolts and is almost all common mode noise because the oscilloscope amplifier only has less than 10 microvolts of noise at this bandwidth of 25 kilohertz. You can reduce this common mode noise somewhat by more strongly grounding everything together, but it's still there. This is why single-ended input scopes typically only go down to one or two millivolts per division. Although the amplifier in the scope is fairly low noise, the common mode noise is usually a few hundred microvolts. Now I'll connect the LNA10 differential amplifier. It's usually used as a differential probe. There are two amplifiers and the negative amplifier is shunted for a differential probe. Then any standard BNC cable can be used as the input which connects to the positive amplifier. I will amplify this one millivolt peak to peak signal by a factor of 10 in differential mode. Clearly it's much cleaner because the common mode noise is gone. Now I can even turn down the signal by a factor of 10 to 100 microvolts peak to peak and increase the gain to 100x. Further reducing the signal down to 10 microvolts peak to peak, we see a cleaner signal at 10 microvolts with a differential probe than the one millivolt signal that was directly connected to the oscilloscope. Amplifying by a factor of 1000x, clearly the noise is a little less than one microvolt RMS. Here's an oscilloscope set at its maximum gain. That's two millivolts per division. The horizontal is 250 microseconds per division. The low pass filter is set at one megahertz and I've got the input short circuited. Obviously there's some noise, around 100 microvolts. However, if the scope is connected to anything in the outside world, and I'll connect these uh, together to stop the oscilloscope from going wild, even though it's short-circuited now, the noise is much worse. In fact, if I touch the ground side to the ground of another device, it's even worse. This is caused by common mode noise. Here's a simple breadboard. It's a thousand to one voltage divider. It's just a 10,000 ohm resistor in series with a 10 ohm resistor. It's connected to a signal generator that's a one kilohertz square wave at three volts peak to peak. I'll use this to produce smaller signals than the signal generator can produce directly. Looking at the three volt output, I'll switch the oscilloscope gain to one volt per division so we can see a clean square wave. Now I'll divide that by a thousand to make a three millivolt peak to peak square wave and I'll switch the oscilloscope back to its maximum gain. As you can see it's quite noisy. We have three millivolts peak to peak which is three volts divided by a thousand with a scope gain of two millivolts per division. 
The noise looks like around a millivolt, but it can be reduced by reducing the bandwidth, for example, down to 25 kilohertz. The noise still seems to be several hundred microvolts, even with this limited bandwidth. Reducing the signal down to one millivolt peak to peak, it's becoming difficult to resolve the square wave, especially if the bandwidth is increased back up to one megahertz. Now I'll take this noisy one millivolt signal and amplify it with the LNA-10. This has two amplifiers, a positive phase and a negative phase amplifier. It's ready to use as a differential amplifier because I short-circuited the negative input. And if I set the knob here, it will amplify the hot signal and the ground signal and subtract them from each other so it becomes a differential probe, which, by the way, can use any normal BNC cable as the input. But right now, I'll set it to act as a single-ended conventional amplifier, not a differential amplifier. The noise appears to be in the range of 100 microvolts because the signal is 1 millivolt peak to peak. There is 1 millivolts going into the LNA-10. It's amplified by 1,000 so that uh, 1 volt peak to peak is going into the oscilloscope. The square wave is a bit cleaner compared to connecting directly to the oscilloscope because there's somewhat better isolation between input and output grounds here. The LNA-10 can also amplify the ground noise by a thousand, shown here. If the ground and hot are precisely subtracted from each other, you get a clean signal. In the LNA-10, these two amplifiers are matched to within one one thousandth of a percent. Now I can even reduce the signal by a factor of ten so that it's only one hundred millivolts divided by a thousand, which is one hundred microvolts. Of course, then it's amplified back up by a factor of a thousand, using differential amplification. Here are separately amplified center pin and ground signals. Now back to differential mode. We're starting to see true thermal noise, so I'll reduce the bandwidth down to 100 kilohertz and do that with the oscilloscope also. This is a differential amplified 100 microvolt peak-to-peak -peak square wave. Now I can even reduce the signal by another factor of 10 so that it's only 10 microvolts peak to peak that's going into the LNA-10. I'll reduce the bandwidth further to 25 kilohertz on both the LNA-10 and the oscilloscope. This shows the true thermal noise of the LNA-10 at a 25 kilohertz bandwidth. Thermal RMS noise is less than a microvolt. For comparison, I'll reduce the size of the scope screen and then reconnect the signal directly to the scope Obviously, the, the scope cannot resolve 10 microvolts, which is the amplitude right now, so I'll increase the signal by a factor of 100 to 1,000 microvolts peak to peak. Even at a narrow 25 kilohertz bandwidth, the 1,000 microvolt signal going directly into the scope is not as clean as a 10 microvolt signal that's amplified with a differential probe. The amplification levels are 10x, 100x, and 1000x. This amplifier does not do unity gain. There's a one pole low pass filter that's continuously adjustable from 1 megahertz down to 1 hertz. Looking at a 1 kilohertz square wave, here is 1 megahertz to 100 kilohertz, 100 kilohertz to 10 kilohertz, 10 kilohertz to 1 kilohertz, 1 kilohertz to 100 hertz. Switching to a 1 hertz square wave, here is 100 hertz to 10 hertz, and 10 hertz down to 1 hertz. This is a 3 millivolt peak to peak square wave at 1 hertz. With the filter set at 10 kilohertz, this is the amplified positive input, the amplified ground, and the differential amplification. There's also AC coupling, where both the negative and positive inputs are AC coupled. The time constant is approximately one second. Compare this to AC coupling of a scope 
which has a time constant typically of a tenth of a second. The offset, as reference to the input, is adjustable from minus one millivolt to plus one millivolt. The LNA-10 is available now, made by Alpha Lab. Its price is a tenth of the typical price of low-noise differential probes.